Welcome students to the chemistry class. This is the class for class 10 standard. We will be doing chapter 1, chemical reactions and equation. This is the part 1 video of chapter 1. So today's objective is students will be able to understand the chemical reaction they encounter in daily life. They will also represent the chemical equations for a chemical reaction. And they will also apply the law of conservation of mass in a reaction. Consider the following situations of daily life and think what happens when iron nail or tawa or pan is left exposed to humid atmosphere. If milk is left at room temperature during summers, food is cooked or grapes get fermented. So, in all these situations, what exactly happens? In all the above situations, the nature and the identity of the initial substance have changed. Question really arised, why? Why? Because in all the situation, chemical reaction takes place. And other word we can say there is a change in the composition of the substance which is formed. How will come to know? You must be wondering that how do we come to know a chemical reaction has taken place? Let's discuss or perform some activities to find these answers. So my first example is learning of magnesium activity 1.1. Let's see what happens when you burn a magnesium ribbon. So when magnesium ribbon is burned in presence of air, white dazzling light is produced with the dense fumes and along with that, once this is being burnt, a white ashes are produced. These white ashes are made magnesium oxide. So, there is a change. What change we observe here that white dazzling light was produced and a new substance is produced. Let's see the another example. The reaction of lead nitrate and potassium nitrate. If I see these two beakers are containing lead nitrate and potassium iodide. Both are colorless as well as transparent solution. So, what happens when we mix these two solutions? Yes, you can observe yellow color solution is formed. When you will leave this undisturbed for a while, you will find that yellow precipitate of lead iodide will be formed. So, a formation of precipitate is there as well as there is a change in color. Let's see the next example. Reaction of zinc with dilute hydrosulfuric acid. Here we have some zinc granules. When these zinc, zinc granules are added to dilute sulfuric acid, you will observe the bubbles coming out from the solution. These bubbles are of hydrogen gas. Meanwhile, if you touch this speaker, this test tube, it becomes hot. This means that there is a change in temperature and evolution of gases taking place. So, in all these cases, what we infer that we can determine whether a chemical reaction has taken place by these observations which we have seen. So the observable changes to identify that, that chemical reaction has taken place or not are change in state, change in color, evolution of gas, change in temperature and formation of precipitate. So if any of these change occurs, or is observed, then we say that there is a chemical reaction taking place. As we observe the changes around us, we can say that there is a large variety of chemical reaction taking place around us. Now, these chemical reactions are usually represented in a symbolic form. And when we represent it in a symbolic form, we call it as chemical equations. So, the definition of chemical equation is symbolic representation of chemical reaction, which we call it as a chemical equation. In activity 1.1, we have seen a word equation that is 
magnesium when react with oxygen it gives magnesium oxide before arrow these are called reactants whereas after arrow the form, form formation is known as product reactants are always placed towards left hand side of the arrow whereas products are always placed towards right hand side of the arrow. so this is a word equation now how to represent them in a chemical equation so writing a chemical equation it has to be more precise and if we use chemical formulae instead of words this gives the information regarding presence of molecule or any atom in the chemical reaction if a molecular formula is written we will come to know how many atoms are present in a given chemical equation if i see this equation magnesium is one atom whereas towards product side also it is one atom but oxygen towards reactant side two atoms are present towards product side it is only one this means that the number of atoms both the sides are not equal so such equations are termed as unbalanced equation or skeletal equation i repeat if number of atoms towards reactant sides and the number of atoms towards right hand sides are not equal then we call it as unbalanced equation so how to balance a chemical equation why do we need this chemical equations to be balanced have you remember the law of conservation of mass which we have studied in class 9 the law of conservation of mass states that mass can neither be created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction this means the total mass of the elements which are present in the products are always equal to the total mass of the elements present in the reactants in other words the number of atom of each element should remain same before and after a chemical reaction so we need to balance a skeletal chemical equation to abide the law of conservation of mass let's learn about balancing a chemical equation step by step first we write a word equation as we already have seen in activity 1.3 we did zinc when reacted with sulfuric acid it produces hydrogen gas now we'll write in a formula form that is an equation form zn plus h2so4 gives znso4 plus h2 let's examine the number of atoms of different elements on both the sides of the arrow see the elements are zinc hydrogen sulfur and oxygen if i see zinc towards left left hand side one atom towards right hand side one atom similarly hydrogen sulfur and oxygen their numbers 2 1 4 is exactly same towards right hand side also 2 1 this means that the number of atoms of each element is the same on both sides of the arrow so hence this equation is a balanced equation let's take another example and balance this equation iron and water when reacts it forms fe3o4 plus h2 how to balance this equation there are various steps first step we can do that iron water or iron oxide hydrogen should be placed in a box so that we cannot change anything of its formula but if we add something it can be multiplied throughout the formula second step we will make a column of 3 where element in second column will place number of atoms in reactant and third column number of atoms in products now can you write the elements name in the first column yes they are iron hydrogen and oxygen now write the number of atoms towards both the sides iron will be 1 whereas this side it will be 3 hydrogen 2 this side it will be 2 oxygen it will be 1 and this side 4 now iron and oxygen are not balanced so which one should be balanced first iron or oxygen 
Now you see that the number of oxygen at number of atoms of oxygen are more as compared to iron. So first we are going to balance oxygen. Oxygen. Here towards product side it is 4, towards reactant side it is 1. So we are going to add a coefficient of 4 towards reactant side. Now we see that oxygen is balanced. But at the same time hydrogen if you see it is not balanced because hydrogen is now 8. Whereas this side it is only 2. So our third step will be to balance hydrogen. So, what we are going to do? The coefficient of 4 will be added to the acting site. So, hydrogen is also balanced. Now, we are left with iron. Iron having 1 and 3. 1 is towards the acting site. And three atoms of iron is towards oxygen product side. Let's add the coefficient three towards reactant side. So now we are balanced. We have balanced iron. Is it a balanced equation now? Yes, it is a balanced chemical equation. Where iron three times, hydrogen eight times, and oxygen four times. Are now this balanced chemical equation, what we have done in the steps are not very prominent. So this method is known as hit and trial method. This chemical equation can be more informative if we add symbols of their physical states. Physical states means gaseous state, liquid state, aqueous state or solid state. We are aware of gaseous, liquid and solid. But then what is aqueous state? Aqueous state means when reactants or products, they are present as solution in water. So when we place these states, now it is an informative balanced chemical equation. So, we have understood the various steps of balancing any given chemical equation. Now it's your turn children. Do the balancing of following examples. Here I have given two equations. Follow it up and please write in your notebook. Thank you and have a nice day.